Hello and welcome to this quick video aimed at those of you who might be new to this particular radio and specifically to HTX. This is the Radio Master MT12. It is designed for ground-based vehicles with a classic trigger for forward and reverse and steering, but lots of little rotary control switches and all other kind of doodads on it as well. Now, for those of you that are coming to this radio from other ground based radios, I've had quite a few requests to kind of show some of the basics of how you create a new model, move channels around, maybe you want the steering and the throttle on different channels, or maybe you just want to add an extra switch, maybe to control something like lights or a horn or some other function on the model. So let's go through all of that. So if you have a question about this radio, I'll put a link down below to things like the little series that I've done on this, but please feel free to ask. If you're not sure about something, pop it down below. This radio system, Edge TX, that's on this particular radio has come from much bigger, more powerful radios and brought all of that powerful configurability down to ground based vehicles too. So let's just very quickly do an overview of the controls. So it looks quite complicated, but it's not. We have the power button in the middle. We have the roller, which also has an enter button. We have up here, the button that you press to go into the system menu, the button that you press here to go into the model menu. And then we have the page backward and forward. We have the return button and we have the button that you press to enter the telemetry screens. The one we're going to press at the moment is to go into the model and that will give us the list of all the models that are currently available. And we can navigate those using the roller to pick the one that we want. Once we have the one that we're interested in, maybe it's the uh, sounds of a particular one that I created when I did that video uh, looking at the sound stuff from, I think it was GT Power. If I just press and hold the enter key, it'll give me an option to say select, backup, copy, move, or delete model. If we say select model, then now that is the model that the radio is working. And we can just return out of that. And now we can see all the controls and everything that we have set up. So that's how you select a model. What about if you want to create a new one? Well, we'll go back into the model menu. Here are all the different models. Let's make a brand new one. So let's choose an empty spot that hasn't got a name and we'll press and hold the enter key and it will give us two options to either create a model or restore one that we've previously deleted. We will create a model. Now, the way I tend to do this is rather than create a new model every single time, if I find that I have a setup that I like and most of the vehicles that I'm setting the radio up for are very similar, rather than create a model, if I press um, exit to come out of that, what I will do is I will actually copy a model. So for the one that I use all the time, let's select maybe this one called Model 08. I recommend giving it a nice name. Then we, I would press and hold, I would say copy, then I would highlight one of the empty spaces and then press enter. And now I have a copy of that model. And that means that then I can tweak things. So rather than have to set everything else from scratch, I almost set up templates. And I'm sure over time, Edge TX will get better at offering wizards when you create a new model rather than create the basics. But let's just delete that one because we don't need that. So let's delete the model. Let's get a new model from scratch. So with the cursor, on the model memory that we want. We'll press and hold and we'll say create model. And the radio at the moment just creates a basic model. And unfortunately that means that it can't go through like a normal wizard would and ask you all the other questions. However, I'm sure in future that's gonna get better. Now, the cool thing is by using the page buttons, we can now page through each of the pages. Up here in the top right hand corner, you can see it says one of 12, two of 12, three of 12, etc. And each of these screens do a different job. Let me very quickly go through each of them. When we press the model button, that's actually taking us into the first of the 12 screens. The second one is for the setup, and this is where we can actually give things a name. So let's call this car. So we'll uh, C and we'll scroll down for A. If you want to change the uh, case from upper to lower case, you just hold and press enter. And let's uh, do the other one, IGKLM and OPQ. I love the way that I still have to say it out loud, like it's 
Sesame Street. There we go, we'll press exit. So now it's called car. So if you go back to the first menu, you can see it's now called car. And I'd recommend naming each of the models just so you can find, remember which one is which. So again, we'll go through the second one. So car, this is also where you can set your timers so that if you are interested in maybe, you know, you know the battery only lasts for five minutes, you can set it on here. Whether or not there are extended limits and trims and whether or not the trims are shown on the screen. So a lot of the basic stuff is in here, including whether or not the internal or external radio frequency stuff is turned on. In this one, this is an Express LRS radio. So if I turn on the Express LRS stuff uh, with CRSF, the radio is now working. However, there is also the option, if I just turn that off, to have the external RF stuff turned on, and that's the optional module that you can put here at the front uh, if you're not using the inbuilt Express LRS one. So lots of flexibility. Then we have whether or not we want the trainer mode and other things too. Next one we go to then is the heli setup. Uh, this shouldn't be on a radio like this. I very much doubt people are going to fly helicopters with this. But the next one then is where we start to get into some of the interesting stuff. Drive modes are kind of ways that you can clump settings together. So rather than you have to set lots of things up on lots of different switches, you just set up the things that you want to change in the particular drive modes, and then you change the drive modes with switches. This is more useful for far more complicated setups, maybe where you're setting up something like you have a truck with an articulated digger arm on the back, and you want to kind of change the outputs depending on where they are and whether or not you park the radio control truck up and you're going to do some digging with it. If you're not doing that kind of stuff, you're probably never going to play with drive modes. Next three screens are the really important ones. Inputs. This is how the inputs are used by the system. By default, there's only two, throttle and steering, and they're set up. And then the next one is going to be the mixes. That's how those inputs and controls are then mixed together. By default, again, you're not going to do any mixing, but for example, in the tracked vehicle setup that I did, we mixed the throttle and steering together so that you can have those two tracks either moving all together or rotating around on the spot. And then finally, then you have the outputs. And this is where you're going to do your sub trim. I would also do your reversing in here as well. So if we just edit channel one, you can see that we can see the maximum direction in each um, direction. The really weird thing with Edge TX, if you're not familiar with it, is that the overall movement goes from plus 100 to minus 100 with zero being the middle position or basically equal to 1500. But you can set your middle channel position here and you can do all that. You can press return to come out of that. So inputs, mixes and outputs, those three together define how the individual controls and switches on the radio are actually presented on the receiver. The next screens then we start to get into more sophisticated stuff. Curves, now this allows us to change the linear relationship from a control. So it might be that you have particular limits that you want for particular controls in particular situations, or you want the relationship to change curves is where you're going to do it. Again, for the vast majority of pilots or drivers, that is not something you're going to play with. The next one then is logical switches. Logical switches is really clever. Now we have the physical switches here on the radio that we can use and we can assign and we'll do that in a moment. Logical switches allows you to create a switch that's not a physical switch, but that's actually turned on and off by something happening in the radio. That could be either the telemetry from the model says that uh, the voltage has gone below a specific value, or it could be that, you know, maybe you want something else to happen. If you kind of want an event to happen where it's not controlled by a switch, but something regard that's happening with the model or something else, you can set up a logical switch. Next one then is special functions. Special functions, there's loads in here. If we just set the first one up, um, again, we can actually assign it. So if I just hit enter, so it's flashing, I can flick the switch that I want. Uh, let's just pick this one in here. So I'm just pressing this momentary switch here just uh, behind the um, trigger. And let's 
then we can go across. Let's press that again, hit enter. There we go, that's stored it. Then there's loads of things we can do. So for example, we can override channel values with special functions. So we can set up things like throttle cuts so that the throttle will only become active when the switch is in a certain position. Again, I've set up a video for that, links down below. But if we highlight this, you can see that we can set up the trainer function using this, or we can do all kinds of things. Use something called instant trim. We can reset the timers. We can change the volume. We can play sounds. So I know some people have asked, and I'll do a video about how you can add music to play while you're driving. You can actually do all those things as well. And that's all in here. Uh, to get rid of this, all I can do is I just say hold and press enter and do clear, and that'll disappear. Next one is telemetry. Telemetry screen is one of those that uh, once you are getting telemetry back from your model, if you have it set up with some kind of flight controller or something else, you'll get all this information. But by default, you will we'll get things like your RSSI and the battery voltage and things like that if that is connected to the receiver. And then the last thing is going to be the display screens. You can have telemetry screen set up that are gonna show different things. So if we come all the way out of here back to the start, if I press, press the telemetry screens, it'll let me know that there's none set up. And in the telemetry screen, if we go into model and go back round, then this is where you would set them up to be man of maybe things like your battery voltage or stuff to have that displayed. So let's not worry about that for the moment. Let's go back to the inputs and we can try this. So say for example, that we want to move things around. Let's go into mixes and say that we don't want th the throttle on channel one and the steering on channel two. It's no big deal to be fair, because you just plug your throttle into the output one and your steering servo into the output two on the receiver, but say you really want it the other way around. We well, can move these things and the mixer is the place to do it. So you press and hold enter where it says throttle and we select move and we can drop it down and keep going until it's in channel two. There we are, we hit enter. And now we'll select the steering and we'll press and hold enter. Again, we'll select move and we'll move it up so it's in channel one, press enter. And now we have moved them around. It is that easy. Final thing I'll show you in today's video is let's add a switch onto channel three, maybe to control something like horn or lights on the vehicle. So with channel three there, we will press and hold enter and it will go in there. The mix, it'll ask us to give us a name. So let me uh, put a name in here. Let's say it's going to be something like the horn. So H. So I've misspelt that, but no problem. If I just come out exit and hit enter again, I can just go across until I find the character that I need to change. And then I can just make sure that we're actually on R, hit enter, come out that, there we go. Next thing we'll do then is we will select the source. The source is what this is connected to. Now it could either be connected to an input, and if we press and hold enter, we can see it can be connected to an input, to one of the sticks, to one of the potentiometers that we can slide around. It could also be some of the special functions like max cyclic or trim. However, we'll come out of that and what we'll do is we'll just hit enter so that it's flashing. And then what we'll do is we'll move the switch that we're interested in assigning. And by moving the switch, it will automatically populate it in here and we just click enter. And if we come out of that now and we come all the way out, then SA, which is the horn, is now on that switch. And how can we check that that has done it? If we come all the way out to the front that we can see here that as I do the accelerator, that's now channel two because we moved it. Steering is now channel one because we moved it. And that switch that we've just assigned is now moving channel three for that lights or horn action. So hopefully that's been useful for those of you that may be getting one of these that have moved up from another more basic radio into the fantastic world of Edge TX. Edge TX is incredibly powerful. The vast majority of the stuff that you're going to need, I've just shown you, but if there's anything else that you're not sure about, let me know. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot.
If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.